And so anytime that you can show a merchant that you have some momentum, um, and online is probably the easiest way to do that, is getting that placement, getting some eyeballs, getting ratings, reviews, getting some sales, and then you have the ability to really position yourself to say to that merchant, uh, you don't want to miss out. This yep. is an up and coming brand. This is an opportunity for you to gain sales. Welcome back to Retail Oriented Retail Fans. This is the show where we talk about all things retail. Um, I am your host, Mike Fowler. Today, we're gonna jump right in because we've got a really special guest with us, Tennessee Vall and president <laughs> of the Sales Factory, Dave Guerin. Dave, welcome to the show. Thank you, go Vols. Yeah, I, I had to mention that because the Tennessee Vols football team is playing some serious football right now. And if you don't know what time this is or when you're watching this episode, they may have just beat Alabama. I'm an Auburn guy from my family, so I always love when anybody yeah, so beats we're together. Alabama. We're aligned. <laughs> right, that's a we're good aligned thing. on that. But that's enough football. We're going to try to keep them on on uh, task today to talk a little bit about PLRs. So, Dave, can you kind of start off just for folks that may be new to retail or new to this channel? What is a PLR? Yeah, so PLR product line review. So basically, it's uh, when a merchant. At a retailer is going to make some decisions about the product line that they carry. Yep. Um, so whether it's going to be the items that are going to be on the shelf or online um, to how they're going to price. Um, there's a lot of different things that go into a PLR. But at the end of the day, it's a high stakes game, right? This is a time when when a retailer can make some big changes that can really change their business for the better or for the worse has incredible impact to the vendors because um, yeah. the vendors can stand to gain or lose quite a bit. So it's a, it's kind of high stakes poker um, for the retail world. Yeah. And talk a little bit about who's involved in a PLR, right? We've sure. got incumbents and then we've got people that are trying to get into the store. So talk sure. a little bit about kind of what does it mean to everybody that that's yeah. playing this game? Yeah. So for, you know, uh, for incumbent vendors, so the people that are already on the shelf or online, um, you know, a lot of risk there. Um, because they have existing business that that's kind of foundational for them and their overall business. Um, so they stand uh, to lose quite a bit, potentially. They also can stand to gain if they want to get more. Um, you also will have some of the fringe players. You'll have some folks that are maybe just have a few items in the lineup that are looking to get more. Um, and then you have people that aren't on the shelf at all, and it creates an opportunity for them to, to get on the shelf, even if it's just for a test, um, just to get a trial. Um, yep. So this is a window of opportunity um, for, for every player in there. And then on the retailer side, <clears throat> you know, it's typically going to be depending on the category, um, and how important that category is, um, you're going to have visibility to potentially the highest up ranks, um, in the retailers merchandising organization. So yeah. sometimes you'll have the, the GMMs or the senior merchants or MVPs, you'll have all those folks that could be involved depending on the category. Um, and then they'll have other folks, um, along for the ride a lot of, you know you'll have everybody from the logistics folks to the marketing folks um in, involved in the discussion as well yeah so pretty high stakes as you said yeah. um certain categories there's a lot of dollars on the line <laughs> and sure. a lot of important people kind of making those decisions so everybody's gonna be ready to play it's a big stage for right sure. it's like a big football game you gotta kind of come <laughs> and, right. and bring it um and be ready to play so um what's kind of what's one of the biggest challenges for people that are not incumbents and trying to break into the the retail channel what's like the biggest challenge to get invited to a PLR well, right well you said it right like getting that invitation yeah um, <clears throat> PLRs are most of the time invitation only right it's not an open call um, so getting on the radar screen of that merchant to get the invite um, so that you are asked to participate and get a chance at the plate yeah. Um, so that is that's probably challenge number one. Um, some of that can be handled through um, just your brand um, and, and being a recognized brand and something that customers um, of the retailer are going to be asking for. Um, so that becomes top of mind if you're not already on the shelf. Um, if you're a new player to the game and you're a, a relative unknown, uh, then it's you know it's about leveraging relationships and getting in front of that merchant anyway, anyhow. Um, so if there's personal relationships that you can leverage to, you know, get in communication. If it's a, you know, third person removed, a friend of a friend of a friend that sure. can suggest, um, a, even a cup of coffee, um, that you can go and have a conversation. I mean, so there's things like that that are just kind of normal networking things to, you know, 
other things that are a little more outlandish. I mean, we've done things like we've put billboards, you know, on the exits coming off of Paces Ferry or exit uh, 33 uh, heading to Lowe's, right? That we've, we've put uh, billboards up so that, you know, they see it. We yeah. geofenced um, offices with digital ads um, so that they begin to get familiar with the brand. I mean, we, we've done some things, we've done mailers, I and mean, we've done all kinds of things just to try to get the attention um, and usually working in concert with other ideas and tactics so that we can just get noticed. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like a, there is a full orchestrated plan to kind of sure. getting that yeah. invite, right? There's some, some of the more outlandish things and wild and crazy things to get right. attention, but there's some other things too, like talk a little bit about kind of building up your, your online sales and your sales sure. and other channels to kind of get that notice. Yeah, no, for sure. So a lot of times you know, getting online um, with your offering is is way easier, yep. right? So whether that be if you are doing a direct to consumer through your own channels, um, Amazon um, is obviously a great way to get eyeballs and get ratings and reviews and things like that, where you can start to get a, a little bit of momentum. Yep. And so anytime that you can show a merchant that you have some momentum um, and online is probably the easiest way to do that is getting that placement, getting some eyeballs, getting ratings, reviews, getting some sales. And then you have the ability to really position yourself to say to that merchant, uh, you don't want to miss out. This yep. is an up and coming brand. This is an opportunity for you to gain sales. Um, you know, even like I said, even for a test, yep. um, it's a great way um, that you can get in front of them and show, you know, check out this product, how much volume it's doing on Amazon. Yep. as an example and check out the ratings and reviews and your customers are going to want this yeah i remember kind of i'll age myself a little bit here but i remember starting off and and plrs and and getting into kind of the big box brick and mortar retailers amazon was viewed a little bit as you know a deterrent or the yeah. other guys the right. competition and now right. it's almost foundational you need to have that piece in place and be performing well there to get the in-store placement, right. right? So it's kind of turned. Now the retailers at brick and mortar are recognizing that as, hey, this is this is a proving ground almost to, to sure. for some of these brands. Yeah, there was definitely a time where, um, depending on the merchant, some merchants would be um, upset with you if yep. you were on Amazon, um, especially if you had a like item, you know, item for item. Um, Sometimes they wanted to talk about Amazon. So it was, you, you kind of had to do a little homework, to figure out where that merchant stood. Nowadays, I think most merchants are looking at it and saying, this is part of the customer journey. You know, there's a lot of people that are going to go online and, you know, whether they're normal Google search, but also end up on Amazon checking out products, but then will end up in their stores. So I think there's been a bit of a reckoning and a, and a reconciliation of, okay, it's going to happen. So we want to make sure that the experience holds up, whether it be what's happening on Amazon needs to get fulfilled in my store. That's a win. Yeah. Um, but there, you know, like I said, there was a lot of conflicting things of showrooming and all that stuff that was happening. Um, so I think the retailers have really started to get their head around like, okay, uh, this Amazon thing's here to stay. Uh, <laughs> so how do we best leverage it and how yeah. do we make it work for us? Um, because you still have an inordinate amount of sales that happen in the store. Sure. Um, as big as um, sales on Amazon have gotten, you know, depending on the category, you're still 90% in store yeah. in a lot of cases. Yeah. So we're, we've kind of talked about getting the invite to a PLR and I always, and I think everybody kind of tends to think about those traditional product categories that are already there and established in brick and mortar retailers. But some of the ways that people are getting invited to PLRs and getting invited to participate in, in meetings for, for space in the store is through innovation and new categories. We're seeing sure. a lot of changes in the store where they're offering new things that weren't there 10 years ago or right. 15 years ago. Right. Um, and so talk a little bit about some of the ones that you've seen that have kind of broken through and you've noticed maybe that have been like, yeah. wow, that's that's innovative. That's that's new. Yeah. I mean, and, and innovation isn't always like a technology play, right? I mean, yeah. it's <clears throat> you had a lot of the the innovation of ring doorbells and, and nest and things like that that were coming in and, and providing new ways to do things that were connected to home improvement in some way. Um, but it's not always that stuff. You know, I mean, I think there's there's also innovation in thinking about categories and things that 
that the customers that are walking the aisles there could want. Yeah. Um, I can recall at Lowe's, there was a big debate when I was there over, um, you know, putting candy in the aisle, um, in the checkout aisle. Yeah. Right. And there was a massive debate over that, um, candy and, you know, sodas and waters and all that stuff. And <clears throat> it became an, a pretty easy call because it's just an add on sale. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, or paper products and paper towels and things like that. I mean, there's so there's things like that 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 aren't that necessarily innovative, um, but they do create opportunities um, to get add on sales. And, I, and you know, and, and lately you've started to see more things, clothing and different things like that. Some of those things are a stretch yeah. and you wonder if they'll last. But I think what we're going to see now and honestly, I believe over the next year, um, there's going to be a a big push to get. Um, ticket adders and things because you know we're running into we're, we're going to start lapping all these price increases yep. um traffic is is going to be down and so you know the benefit you had in 2020 of everybody's at home so you had increased traffic and then you had double digit price increases and then in 21 you still had double digit price increases but traffic was starting to fall well now here we are you don't have either right the traffic's going to be down and the you can't take prices up anymore because inflation is starting to, to mitigate. Um, it's going to create more opportunities yeah. for folks um, because what will happen is the, the retailers and the merchants are going to be looking for ways to comp the comp, right? They're going to be looking for ways to how can I get some add on sales? How can I get some things to bolster the ticket? Um, because we're going to be in an environment where the, the numbers are going to be dropping. So it's going to create opportunity yeah. um, for a lot of people. Um, so I would say if, even if you're a category that maybe has not traditionally been there, I'm on the home improvement side, um, or a category that you maybe you've been fighting for more space for years. If you can show that you're a, a reason for a customer to come there that wouldn't normally come there or an easy add on, I, th I think you're going to have a very compelling story. Yeah. I think that's a wonderful story to tell, right? Cause yeah. even before the past few years and, and pre pandemic, there was massive competition amongst these re retailers, right? Everybody's looking for that one little sliver of an edge up or a toehold to kind of get the the leg up on the competition. Now it's even, it, it, it's exacerbated. It is to a really high extent where, where merchants are really looking for something, something that's going to add to their program, yeah. right? Because it's difficult. Well, I think you got to think about innovation beyond just the product. I sure. mean, if you can have a, a service offering, a pricing innovation, things like that can also stand out yeah. and be a way that they can differentiate and win. Yeah. Really good stuff. While we have you in the chair, um, I, I never let any of my guests go without a couple rapid fire questions. So I'm going to, okay. I'm going to okay. ask you a couple questions. First thing that pops into your head, just go with it. That's um, dangerous. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> Are you ready? Here we go. Ready. Um, what's the best and worst purchase you've made lately? <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, the best and worst, per well, it might be the same thing. I bought some new <laughs> golf clubs and it made oh, me oh. feel really good. Yeah. Um, but I'm still terrible at golf. <laughs> so maybe the clubs weren't the problem. Maybe not. It tends <laughs> to happen that way, right? The equipment may That's not right. always be the, right. the issue. Um, all right. What do you grab off the shelf when you're waiting to check out? Oh man. Um, you know, I'm a, I mentioned the, the you candy <laughs> thing right earlier. So, um, I was on the camp of let's have candy at the checkout aisle Yeah, because I'm that guy, right? I, like if I'm standing there long enough, I'll stare at it long enough and it'll eventually <laughs> just have to happen. So yeah. So I'll, I'll grab the uh, peanut M&Ms and I, Oh man, that's a classic. Can't go wrong there. And absolutely having those little incremental at basket add-ons, got to have that stuff. That's really good stuff. All right. Finally, if you could tell one, like if you could tell retail brands one thing and, and to kind of keep in mind, um, as they're approaching PLRs and just trying to think about the retail channel, what would that one thing be? Uh, I would say the one thing, well, I think at the end of the day, it's, uh, I'm going to cheat. This is going to be like two things. That's sorry. <laughs> we'll um, give it to you. But it, it is, you know, think about the consumer through both lenses, the retailer's lens and your lens, right? A lot of times, um, most vendors roll in talking about themselves the entire time and wanting to, to talk about how great they are. Yeah. Right. And, and how you need us. Right. I think the ones that win are typically saying, um, let's talk about the end user together. 
how do we work together um, in a way that you're going to win and we're going to win um, and and really focus more on that retailer yeah. and say, listen, these are the things we are doing to help you win with the end user. So you got to know the end user. You got to be able to say what they need and what they want. Um, and you got to be able to show how you can meet that need with the retailer, yeah. um, not just focused on, you know, why you're awesome. Um, so being able to ha have an empathetic view um, through the retailer's eyes as well, I think is really important. Yeah, I think that's that's really wise and really good for our listeners and viewers to hear um, because that's really that PLR or that big first meeting is often the first step in what you're hoping to be a long term partnership. Right. Right. So that's the step where you can say, hey, it's not all about me. This is about a partnership. It's about you. It's about growing our businesses together, right? So that's that's what those merchants are looking for, and that's a way that you can help them and help yourself. That's right. Yeah. Well, Dave, thanks a lot for being here. Go Vols. Appreciate it. Go Vols. Thank one. you. That was a fun it. one. Uh, we appreciate you being on the show. Um, and for all you retail fans out there, thanks for tuning in. Uh, no matter where you're watching, if it's Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, where it, wherever it is, click the little like button and hit subscribe. Maybe click that bell icon uh, on the side of the screen so you can make sure you, you hear when Retail Oriented is, is coming out. And if you've got anything that you want to hear about or guests that you want us to have on the show, please reach out to us. You can go on our website, salesfactory.com, and fill out a little form submission there. You can email me directly, mike.fowler Mike at salesfactory.com, or go in the comments and please interact with us there and let us know what you want to hear uh, more about and who you want to hear more from. And remember, in the retail channel, it's all about selling in and selling through.